Hello everyone, my name is Untogether and welcome to Why You Should Play Far Cry 2. This is, without a doubt, one of the best FPS games of all time. Uh, that's not a claim I make lightly, I mean it's a very oversaturated genre. There's an awful lot of games been in this genre, uh, but this is one of the best. And here's one of the reasons why. That Uzi. That Uzi that I'm shooting off here is just... Oh, another bloke. Get him. Oh, listen. Oh. That Uzi is one of the most single, most satisfying guns to use in any game that there has ever been. Um, closely followed, funnily enough, by the other gun that I've just pulled up here, which is the Dark Rifle. And you'll see why that's so satisfying in a moment. Uh, all of the guns in this game are great, but that Uzi, up close and personal, you shoot off 30 rounds in 2 seconds and you just shred enemies. It's oh, it's awful. It's absolutely brutal. Guns in this game have weight, which is one of the reasons it's one of the best FPSs ever. Enemies aren't bullet sponges. They will go down in 3 or 4 hits if that one on a headshot, he said, demonstrating his own point. Uh, the enemies don't beat you by, by just soaking up your damage and dishing it out to you. They beat you by numbers and by tactics. Um, this small outpost that we're coming up here. See, he spotted me there. That's a pretty good line of sight for an AI enemy. The guys there, they actually saw me. Which most games are this distant. You'd be able to sit off here and pick them off forever and they just drop one by one without ever knowing you're there. But these guys are pretty self-aware. They're pretty good at, at coming around and flanking you and causing you damage. And there he was. He came round the outside of us and tried to catch us out. So yeah, as I say, this small outpost won't cause us many problems. More guns. An RPG. And just beautifully in time is an enemy. And you can see how weighty and beautiful that feels. And there's another reason why this game is great. And that's fire. Fire spreads. This is Africa, everything's tinder dry. Uh, you really have to watch out for what's going on where that's concerned. Graphically, I mean, you can see from this video, this game is still very much a looker. Um, possibly only the first crisis, maybe. Uh, and perhaps this game's own sequel uh, has outdone this game for the looks of the foliage and the, of the lush, you know, verdant African just beauty just coming down here and we'll, we'll take a look at the little lake and the car that's dropped in it okay the car doesn't look fantastic but everything else around it just looks absolutely amazing even to this day so let's talk about the plot for a minute uh you're a morally ambiguous mercenary and you've arrived in an african country um remains unnamed through the game uh but i think i did see somewhere online that somebody noted that uh they spotted a brand of beer on a bottle in the game and that beer you can only buy in the Central African Republic <laughs> so, it's, uh, so that's a bit of a clue where to hide your influences Ubisoft uh, yeah and it, it's funny how a country that has Republic or Democratic Republic of in its name is usually anything but anyway I digress uh, your mission in this game is to hunt down a man known only as the Jackal uh, who's an arms dealer uh, and he's arming both sides of the conflict. There are two uh, revolutionary arms. Um, this doesn't make you the good guy, not even in the slightest. Um, you're a mercenary. Uh, your single amoral aim is just to make as much money as possible from the conflict while you're here. Uh, through mission payments, through looting diamonds, as many conflict diamonds as you can fit in your pants. You do end up helping the locals now and again. Oh, the flare just went up. I'm going to get some reinforcements. You do end up helping the locals now and again, but they're for purely selfish reasons. Uh, you bring passports so families can escape. Oh, no. No, you're not going to shoot that RPG down. You bring passports to families so that they can escape. Uh, they can escape the country into neighbouring countries. Um, but you only do that because they've offered to give you malaria medicine because right, that's one of the first things that happens to you is you contract malaria on your, uh, on your arrival here so these guys on the jeeps they've turned up because of the flare they're the reinforcements that we called for managed to get him off 
still a few guys here. The little place that I've entered here, probably at some point this will be the focal point for one of the missions in the game. At the moment I'm just wandering around, uh, seeing what I can find, seeing what's going on. And so we're going to try a different tack here. Again, you can switch up the weapons and uh, something that we do have are these heavy machine guns based on the back of these jeeps. Is there a guy down there? Or... I'm just trying to blow up that jeep. So yeah, there, there's a lot of vehicles. There's, there's a few uh, land-based vehicles. Um, oop, more reinforcements just turned up. Never drive straight at a guy with a machine gun. I can't get him with that. It won't go low enough, so we'll have to jump out and uh, shoot him up there. My health at the bottom left, so I have to use a syringe to bring that back up. And that's one way that you can keep yourself going. That jeep is on fire. Oh, guy there. Oh. And that jeep did blow itself up. It did manage to blow itself up there at the end. So it's, it's the freeform nature of this as well. Like I say, this isn't. This is all freeform. This is just a part of the game. I've just managed to find this place, just going off the beaten track. I love that Uzi. Just going off the beaten track, and uh, oh, Uzi V shotgun. Oh, that didn't work well. Plain spray. There we go. And just to make sure. Yeah, this is just off the beaten track. There's no scripted parts here. The guys are all just reacting to me. It looks like now I've managed to clean out. Yeah, did not the radio. I've managed to clean out the uh, the little hub here. These things are always fun. These little gas canisters. As he spins around <laughs> and then explodes, and that will set another fire. You can you really can use fire in this game to your advantage. If you can set fire, you get molotovs are one of the weapons that you receive. Uh, you can set fires between their uh, between their lookout posts and you can flush them out in a certain direction um, and you can set up kill zones that way so yeah so there we go and we're just about to come out of here now I think that flashing suitcase it's up the top there I don't know if you saw that just as we went past uh, there'll be diamonds in there and those are the game's currency with which you buy certain things And we're out of there and we're away. We're off into the desert, the desert part of uh, of the map here. So this is something. So from here what I wanted to do was I wanted to go to a place called Mike's Bar. Uh, so you could meet some of the other guys who are around. So the first thing that we've got to do, I did snipe a guy from here. Uh, we've got to get through this little checkpoint here. The driver's drive, driving at me. We'll kill the driver. We'll come up here. We'll take out this guy. And I think we're going to be pretty clear on this. There's a fire that we started earlier. You can drink water just to regain your health, like a quick use med pack. So the next thing that we'll do once we've cleared that out, it's a long way away, the bar, so we'll need a car. Uh, you can repair vehicles as long as they're not completely exploded, uh, just by letting a little bit off the radiator, which isn't that realistic, but hey, video game. So, we'll get ourselves a vehicle and we'll go to Mike's bar and we'll have a look and we'll see what's going on there. Fortunately, we got caught and these guys caught up with us, so we have to jump to the main cannon and we can take care of the guys who were chasing us. Now, my car's steaming a bit as you can see, so what we'll do is we'll switch out and we'll take one of theirs. So we'll switch vehicles and we'll carry on on our journey and we will head around this way. So we've got the map out, see where Mike's bar was just down the bottom there, but we're going to come through another major checkpoint here, which means, yep, we're probably going to get shot at, but we don't need to engage, all we're trying to do is get to the bar, we just get to the bar and have a drink, and what's going to, no, it's, okay, looks like we, our vehicle just managed to get us through that, we're steaming, it's losing speed. It doesn't look good for our poor car. Okay. Probably they're going to be chasing us any minute. Okay. We'll hoik out of there. We'll grab this car. We'll switch vehicles yet again. And we'll now go to Mike's bar. And here we are, finally. Finally we've arrived at Mike's bar. 
because there's no fast travel and not as you understand it in this game the map is huge it takes a long time to get from place to place um, I'm just going to pop into the armory here uh, remember I told you that the currency in this game was diamonds and you can use the computer here to buy new weapons to buy upgrades for existing weapons and various other items that you're going to see here like I said but like I said before there's no fast travel in this game and not only is there no fast travel all the checkpoints and locations like that town they repopulate and that really divided opinion with Far Cry 3 the section that you just saw where I was trying to move from from where we started I said oh we're going to come to Mike's bar to me actually arriving there took me eight minutes eight minutes and there were probably four major engagements where I could have died on the way and that's true of every mission in this game the game you'll get a mission and it will be the other side of the map and that there are some buses which are located not very conveniently at the corners of the map so you can sometimes get a little bit closer but you've still got to go through an awful lot of checkpoints and an awful lot of other things to get to your mission location and as I say with respawning checkpoints no is ever safe you never clean out an area all the guns and weapons that you've bought are stored in one of these rooms there's two or three of these around the map so you can always regain your uh, your weapons and so on so all of these things and it really divided opinion with Far Cry 2 people move from one location to the next they completed a mission and they die on the way back for that mission to get the next one How do you like drug dealers? they're going back through the same checkpoint they cleared out on the way there for me, this game isn't so much about the missions. It's about the journey. And I can just quite happily noodle around hour after hour in Far Cry 3. Uh, Far Cry 2, getting ahead of myself. In Far Cry 2, just shooting the place up. So these guys in here, at the bar, these are some of the other mercenaries that are here. They will often have missions for you. Uh, and we just pick one up here. Welcome to the jungle, amigo. Yeah, we've been here some time. So this is Far Cry True. Uh, it's really something that you should play. Um, because it looks gorgeous. The gunplay is gorgeous. Grenades blow up satisfyingly underwater. And you can spray a clip from an Uzi in that, that long. Okay, thanks everyone. I'll see you next time.